beautiful, wonderful evening. I'm so glad that you're here to participate in this special liturgy, regardless of whether you're here in person or you're joining us via the live stream. I want to take a moment to explain a couple of things about the service this evening. First, we are honored to have Bishop Doug Sparks here, for whom I also work half-time as a missioner in our diocesan offices. We're thrilled to have him officiating at our service this evening and installing me as your priest in charge. It's my honor to serve as both priest and missioner with him as my bishop. Second, joining us this evening is Deacon Kathy Townley. Deacon Kathy and I met about a decade ago during a shared formation group, and I'm blessed by her presence and her support this evening. Deacon Kathy serves at Trinity Episcopal Church in Michigan City. And what a delight it will be to have a bishop, a priest, and a deacon at our altar this evening. Third, don't be alarmed that our Eucharistic prayer is a bit different than our regular Sunday morning. I promise you two things. One, it is an approved liturgy. And two, we'll be back to write one come Sunday morning. Please enjoy it for its beauty and its difference. Remember, we're more flexible than we give ourselves credit for. Fourth, if you haven't received communion here since the pandemic began, I just want to make sure we're on, um, in, we have the same process in that we will bring communion to you in your seat. If you would like to receive in the form of the bread alone, simply put your hands out and we'll offer you the wafer. If you prefer only to receive a blessing, cross your arms and we'll know that you prefer a non-contact blessing. Lastly, enjoy this beautiful liturgy, the music, the rich symbolism, while always, always, always listening for the whisperings of the Holy Spirit. Let us worship.
There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope we have called to us. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation, that the whole world may see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. My friends, we're gathered here this evening in thanksgiving for a new time in the life of St. Paul's in La Porte. People of St. Paul's, you've reflected on your ministry and discerned your choice for a new priest in charge. We have chosen and called Michelle Walker on to be, to be our priest, priest in charge, and she, and she has, has accepted. I commend your choice and affirm this call. The letter of institution will now be read. Letter of institution of a minister, Diocese of Northern Indiana, Michelle I. Walker, Presbyter of the Church of God, you have been called to work together with your bishop and hello presbyters as a pastor, priest, and teacher and to take your share in the councils of the church. Now, in accordance with the canons, you have been selected to serve God as priest in charge in Laporte, Indiana, at St. Paul's Episcopal Church. This letter is a sign that you are fully empowered and authorized to exercise this ministry, accepting its privileges and responsibilities as a priest of the diocese in communion with your bishop. Having committed yourself to this work, do not forget the trust of those who have chosen you. Care alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. By your words and in your life, proclaim the gospel love and serve Christ's people, nourish them and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them. Given under my hand and seal in the city of Laporte on the sixth day of May, 2021, and in the fifth year of my consecration, Douglas E. Sparks, Bishop of Northern Indiana. Are you, the people of St. Paul's, ready to continue your ministry with Michelle as your pastor? Michelle, with this Bible, we proclaim and hear God's living word. 
Join us in the ministry of telling the good news to the world. Amen. Let us hear again the good news of salvation. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Listen to me, O house of Jacob, all the remnant of the house of Israel, who have been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb, even to your old age. I am he, even when you turn gray, I will carry you. I have made, I have made and will bear, I will carry and will save. To whom will you liken me and make me equal and compare me as though we were alike. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, my friends, since we have confidence to enter the sanctuary by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us approach with a true heart and full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast to the confession of our hope without wavering, for he who has promised is faithful. And let us consider how to provoke one another to love and good deeds. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God.
for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming, who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Christ is risen. Please be seated while we take a temporary technical time out to retrieve the microphone. Can you hear me now? A few weeks ago, during a meeting with my spiritual director, Sister Nancy, she and I were talking about the miracle that is my call to St. Paul's Laporte. We had a lovely conversation, during which time it was obvious to me that the core of my installation service sermon had already been discussed. I tried and failed to convince her to come here and preach the sermon this evening. I may have been more successful if she hadn't already had plans to be out of town this evening. Consequently, the next best plan was to request permission from the bishop to preach my very own sermon, to which he agreed, so you can blame him. And so here we are, exploring the curious path Mother Michelle, has taken to meet you in this ministry at this time in Laporte. As I shared with you on Easter morning, while we listened to the rapidly approaching fire trucks as they responded to our unplanned test of the smoke detection system, my first ever Episcopal service was March 30th, 1997, Easter Sunday, Right there in that first or second pew, I think it was the first one where Bruce is, on the official side. My then boyfriend and now husband sat me next to his mother while he served up here in the altar space. And the only instructions he provided me were, stand when everybody else stands, and sit or kneel when they sit or kneel. All in all, it was good advice. Smells, bells, and a whole lot of liturgical gymnastics were experienced by me for the first time on that morning. 
I admit to feeling out of place and awkward, while also keenly interested and delighted at the same time. Over the weeks, months, and years that would follow, I would grow to love our Episcopal liturgies, first in their right one form, and then eventually in all of their different forms. From that first Easter Sunday in 1997 until August of 2005, we were active members here. I was confirmed on these very steps right here. Both of our daughters were baptized in that font in the back corner. Several of you will remember the huge undertaking of our Vacation Bible School program that one year, Serengeti Trek, you can nod if you remember that, for which I was the VBS director. I also taught Sunday school and I served on vestry. Fathers Seabrook, Canestrom, and Jones led this parish during Joe and Mai's mutual time here. And then we left. There's no way to sugarcoat the difficult decision it was to step away from St. Paul's. And there is no way to minimize the hurt it may have caused those of you that experienced it firsthand. To you, especially, I offer my sincerest apologies. I can say it wasn't a decision arrived at easily. It affected me so much that I still have the resignation email from over 15 years ago that I sent to Father Jamie and the vestry. In preparation for this sermon, I dug it up, and I can still feel the anguish of my words. Actual phrases from the email include... It is with a heavy heart that I share with you my decision to resign. I believe that God is moving me in a direction that is different from St. Paul's and that if I step out in faith, he will guide me there. I wish nothing but the best to St. Paul's. At the time, I believed I had valid reasons for my decision, but in typical divine humor, God laughed at those in the most mysterious ways. I will tell you honestly that one or two days after my resignation, I experienced a glimpse into God's plan for my life. After a bodywork treatment that involved essential oils, as I lie face down on a massage table, I had an experience that I can call a vision, a dream, a divine sighting, insert word here. I remember a tunnel with the most peaceful, beautiful, breathtaking, divine white light. In that moment, in my mind, I was certain I must be dying, as it was the only thing I'd ever heard about seeing the light. I was terrified of leaving my then three- and five-year-old daughters without a mother. Now, obviously, I didn't die, but the rest of this experience changed my life. From the other end of the tunnel, I heard a voice that I knew unquestionably to be that of Jesus. And he said, and this is a direct quote, Michelle, you are going to be a priest. I was bewildered and managed somehow to reply, not out my mouth, but in some way that you mystically communicate with your divine. I said, oh, no, I'm not. I really did. (laughs) To which Jesus replied, yes, you are. And I argued, but more weakly, I can't do that. And he offered definitively, yes, you can. For me, the ground might have just as well been shaking and the heavens have been opening. I couldn't believe I had this experience and I didn't know what to do with the information or if I should even believe it happened. It was terrifying and joyous all at the same time. Now, I won't narrate the entire 15 years of my life between now and then, but I will share with you that this vision immediately changed the course of my life and my thinking on many topics. I even went back to Father Jamie right away, and I shared it with him, and I asked his advice on whether I'd misinterpreted my previously valid reasons for leaving St. Paul's. I will always be thankful to Father Jamie for encouraging me to move 
onward and not backward. He knew St. Paul's then wasn't yet prepared to support a woman aspiring to be a priest. I remember walking back into the church on that day and stopping outside the Sunday school classroom and thinking, wouldn't it be ironic if someday I ended up returning here as a priest? Then I simply couldn't have imagined it, though. Today's readings actually commemorate St. Julian of Norwich, also known as Lady Julian or Dame Julian. She lived in the mid-1300s, and in a near-death experience, she received a series of 15 spectacular visions that brought the passion of Jesus Christ to her in an exceptionally real way. These visions so impacted her life that she dedicated the rest of it to writing about them and continually offering herself and her questions to God in prayer. Now, many believers have found inspiration and nurturing in her writings and prayers. And one of her more famous sayings is that all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. It's a phrase that finds its way to my lips during times when common sense and a straightforward path are neither so common nor so straightforward. I imagine others find ease in these words as well. Now, certainly I'm no Dame Julian. I do find relief, however, in learning about the lives of others that have been touched by the divine in unexpected and mystical ways. And this is where we circle back to my conversation with Sister Nancy. Sister Nancy became my spiritual director in 2008. Nearly 13 years ago, she has tolerated me that long. Can you believe it? She recollects with a knowing smile that never, ever, ever previously in the entire time she has known me have I expressed a desire to become a parish priest. My call to the priesthood was first and foremost obedience to the experience on that massage table on that hot August afternoon. And despite her many, many, many attempts to help me realize a desire to commit myself unconditionally to one parish, I've never been ready until it was St. Paul's. I've served the church in several different capacities, but that commitment to one congregation for an undetermined amount of time never quite hit home until Bishop Doug suggested it as a possibility in November of 2019. One of the mystical things in my life that I've come to trust more and more is a kind of knowing or certainty about some of life's events. I often refer to these experiences as the Holy Spirit whispering in my ear. Sometimes she has to shout. I preached recently about testing these certainties against time with prayer, with trusted spiritual advisors, and with reason. All of those techniques I apply to this specific certainty. And I, I had shortly known after Bishop Doug's suggestion that it was indeed, at least for me, a certainty. And all of these techniques and assurances are what led Sister Nancy to say something to the effect of, Michelle, you have to tell them how perfectly God formed you for this call. They need to know that God has been working this miracle, this matching, for more than 15 years to get you to this moment. I couldn't argue with Sister Nancy. To be honest, I seldom argue with Sister Nancy. And so here we are, priest and parish. All of us wondered how this call would turn out when we made the decisions more than a year ago. There were many unknowns, and there continue to be many unknowns. However, we have learned a few things. We know I'm a leader who likes to communicate, and you are a people that appreciates transparency. We know I love and respect our right one worship, 
always doing my best to honor our traditions, and you have supported me as I have grown, and I continue to grow more into a chanted right one presider. We know I'm not afraid to make mistakes, although I prefer not to do so, and you can laugh alongside of me, even as recently as last Sunday, when I could not find the right post-communion prayer to save my life. We know I'm unafraid to discuss any topic with you, openly, to admit when I don't know the answer, and to pray you through whatever is going on in your life. We know I have a way with technology, and that has been really important this past year. And we know all of these things will help us to discover together where and how God is calling us into deeper ministry here in Laporte. Our gospel passage for this service is an excerpt from the exchange between Jesus, a Jew, and the woman at the well, a Samaritan. We remember this story and that Jesus happens, just happens to be at the well at an uncommon time, seemingly waiting for this Samaritan woman, with whom he really should never have had conversation, and yet he does. He asks her for a drink of water, and in the most unexpected way, he proceeds to tell her about living water that will spring forth for all of those that accept it and that this living water is eternal life. Talk about catching her off guard. Then he reveals to her that he himself is that living water, that Messiah of which she has heard, and she is transformed to the point of returning to the city and proclaiming his greatness, all while the disciples don't quite understand what is going on. Dear ones, it's a bit like that for us as well. I have spoken with so many of you who have expressed a deep desire to share that living water with others in our community, outside these beautiful four walls. You have wonderful memories of a non-pandemic church full of people and full of children. I've even heard rumors of standing room only for Christmas Eve services, maybe a couple years ago, but still, I heard it happened. I would love to live that memory with you again in future years, and I hope to be around long enough to witness it. But hear me clearly, it won't happen because of me. Please hear that. I am no savior to this congregation. My 5, 10, 15, or 20 year plan does not contain a miraculous program by which church growth happens easily and without work. I am, however, willing to walk alongside of you to try new things while remaining faithful to the core elements of who we are and to listen, listen, listen always closely for God's will for us, with you. Like Jesus, we might need to wait at the well at an unexpected time and speak to the people with whom we are least likely to interact. Did you hear that? Like Dame Julian, we might need to hang on tightly to our visions while we offer our questions and prayers repeatedly to our Heavenly Father. Like myself, Mother Michelle, we might need to laugh at ourselves when we fail, sometimes feel inadequate for the task at hand, and commit to it anyway. Sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of his life, death, and resurrection was never promised to be an easy task. However, it is a task for which we are created and brought together in this community of believers called St. Paul's. And so, with one full year under our belts together, we renew ourselves in ministry on this night. We install me officially as your priest in charge. That means there's no going back now. 
And we expect to be a little more like Jesus and a little more like Dame Julian as we listen intently for how God is calling us all out of our comfort zones to share the beauty that is St. Paul's with this town in which we live. And as we wait and as we toil and as we listen, we will hear Dame Julian saying, floating on the wind into our hopeful hearts, as she says, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Praise God, and may it be so. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Michelle, people of St. Paul's, my sisters, brothers, and siblings in Christ, in holy baptism, we received full adoption through God's grace and full empowerment for ministry through the Holy Spirit. Will you work together as partners in the mission of the church to reconcile all people to God through Christ? We will with God's help. The water of baptism signifies our eternal covenant with God. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death. By it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to Christ, we bring into his fellowship those who come to him in faith, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Send your spirit upon this water as we recall the gift of our own baptism. Let us renew the solemn promises and vows of holy baptism by which we renounce Satan and all his works and promise to serve God faithfully in God's holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? I do. I do. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship, in the breaking of bread, and in the prayers? I will with God's help. Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will with God's help. Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons? Loving your neighbor as yourself. I will with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will with God's help. May Almighty God, who has given us a new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, 
bestowed upon us the forgiveness of sins and called us to ministry in Jesus Christ. Keep us in eternal life by his grace. Through Christ our Lord. Michelle, with this book, we offer our prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving to God. Amen. In the spirit of God, who searches the heart and knows our deepest needs, let us pray for the church, the world, and all who yearn for Christ's healing. Let us join in the litany. Holy God, in whom all things in heaven and earth have their being. Have mercy on us. Jesus the Christ, through whom the world is reconciled to the Father. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, whose glory fills the world and searches the depths of God. Have mercy on us. Blessed Trinity, source of both, source of both unity and diversity. From blind hearts and petty spirits that refuse to see the need of all humankind for your love. From pride, self-sufficiency, and the unwillingness to admit our own need of your compassion. From discouragement in the face of pain and disappointment, and from lack of persistence and thoroughness. From igno ignorance, apathy, and complacency that prevent us from spreading the gospel. Savior, us. O God, we pray for the gifts of ministry, for all lay persons, bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially Michelle, elected priest in charge of St. Paul's Laporte, and all those entrusted to her care. Inspire our minds with a vision of your kingdom in this time and place. Touch our eyes that we may see your glory in all creation. Touch our ears that we may hear from every mouth the hunger for hope and stories of refreshment. Touch our lips that we may tell in every tongue and dialect the wonderful works of God. Touch our hearts that we may discern the mission to which you call us. Touch our feet that we may take your good news to our neighborhoods, communities, and all parts of the world. Yes. Touch our hands that we may each accomplish the work you give us to do. Yes. Strengthen and encourage all who minister in your name in lonely, dangerous, and unresponsive places. Yes. 
hear us, O Christ. Open the hearts and hands of many to support your church in this and every place. Hear us, O Christ. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, the glory, the victory, and the majesty. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. And you are exalted as head over all. Amen. Michelle, Michelle with, with prayer, prayer companionship, companionship, and laying on, on of hands, we bring the reconciling presence of Christ to those who seek healing. Join us in this ministry by calling us to repentance and assuring us of God's forgiveness and love. Amen. Live without fear. Your creator has made you holy, loves you eternally, and reconciles you to one another. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. Peace be with you, Christ peace. We offer thanksgiving to God for the ministries represented by these symbols and ask God's grace to live ever more fully into the commitments we have made in baptism. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite Joe and Elizabeth and Abby to please come forward at this time and join here. You want to come up and join it, come on up here. your mother here? Turn around, this way. Turn around that way. My friends, let's welcome your new priest in charge here at St. Paul's in the Fort. <laughs> Walk in love as Christ loves us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God. There's an offering basin here. If you'd like to make an offering to uh, be used uh, for uh, Mother Michelle's discretionary fund, I encourage your generosity.
Jesus. We now continue with Eucharistic Prayer 3 from Enriching Our Worship. I also want to make note that uh, we will conclude after the, uh, the, the antiphon refrain at the end of the Eucharistic Prayer with the Lord's Prayer in the traditional form. The Lord be with you. Also Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All thanks and praise are yours at all times and in all places, our true and loving God, through Jesus Christ, your eternal word, the wisdom from on high, by whom you created all things. You laid the foundations of the world and enclosed the sea when it burst out from the womb. You brought forth all creatures of the earth and gave breath to humankind. Wondrous are you, holy one of blessing. All you create is a sign of hope for our journey. And so, as the morning stars sing your praises, we join the heavenly beings and all creation as we shout with joy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Glory and honor are yours, creator of all. Your word has never been silent. You called a people to yourself as a light to the nations. You delivered them from bondage and led them to a land of promise. Of your grace, you gave Jesus to be human, to share our life, to proclaim the coming of your holy reign and give himself for us a fragrant offering. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, you have freed us from sin, brought us into your life, reconciled us to you, and restored us to the glory you intend for us. We thank you that on the night before he died for us, Jesus took bread, and when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his friends, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, said the blessing, gave it to his friends and said, drink this all of you. This is the cup, this is my blood of the new covenant shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. And so, remembering all that was done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection and ascension, longing for Christ's coming in glory and presenting to you these gifts your earth has formed and human hands have made, we acclaim you, O Christ. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Christ Jesus, come in glory. Lord, send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and wine that they may be to us the body and blood of your Christ. Grant that we, burning with your Spirit's power, may be a people of hope, justice, and love. Giver of life, draw us together in the body of Christ and in the fullness of time, Gather us with blessed St. Paul, the Blessed Virgin Mary, Dame Julian of Norwich, 
and all the, your people into the joy of our true eternal home through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. By the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, we worship you, our God and creator, in voices of unending praise. Blessed are you now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Loving God, we give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with the spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. We've celebrated this new pastoral relationship in the great prayer of the church. Michelle, I commend to your love and care the people of St. Paul's Episcopal Church, Laporte. My brothers, sisters, siblings in Christ, I commend to your love and care your new priest in charge, colleague and friend, Michelle. God's blessing be with you. Christ's peace be with you. The Spirit's outpouring be with you, now and always. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of the risen Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.